sleep deprivation started with me when I was actually in hospital. When I had my second child, he unfortunately had to go in intensive care. Um, and I thought, great, I'll get some sleep. <laughs> Which is horrible, but not really. I mean, he was, he was two evils. He was born a bit early, so they put him in an incubator. He was fine. And I thought, great, I'll get some sleep. But then I didn't realise they'd put me in a shared room, and the other woman's baby was crying all night. And by the second night, I was so fed up, I stalked the corridors of this hospital, going to the nurses, just find me a cupboard anywhere to sleep. <laughs> I was desperate. I think it's the worst thing, isn't it? Well, well, I, is. I had twins, so with, my, with mine. I was thinking, well, it'd be fine because they'll both wake up at the same time and I'll <laughs> feed them at the same time and then they'll go to sleep at the same time and they don't do any of that. Oh, they were completely out of sync. Oh, yeah, completely. And could you try and get them into sync, though? Keep one up longer and wake well, one did, up I earlier? I tried, but they have their own idea of when they want to wake up. And Steve, bless him, my husband, he's, he was good. He was good. But it was, you know, I had to breastfeed one and then he would do the other one with a bottle. But he... I don't know, do, do you find this? Yeah. Men... Mm can sleep through a baby yes, 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 yes. They won't. Absolutely. They don't hear it. Yes. But I think it's selective hearing, isn't yes, it? Yes. I mean, I can sleep through Chris's alarm, but my alarm will wake me up because it's not important. I don't need to do that. So when mm. they know that you are the one that's going to get up and whatever, they can switch off. Yeah, and equally, <laughs> you could. If they said, if you were bottle feeding, and said, I'll do the, the feeds tonight and everything, you would not wake up. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, because I used to wake up when I used to hear my kids' dummies drop. And oh, I'd, I'd be in the next room and I'd hear just a thunk. And I'd think, right, up and, oh, up no, and get it. I oh. became such a light sleeper. But I think how long about, for? Oh. I think the very early days you oh, are, because worried about I cough death a, and stuff. Well, I guess so. I mean, I, but I think at that point when you're worried about it, you're also so fatigued that, you, you know, you do conk mm. out. But I mean, I think for a good year after each of my kids yeah. were born. And how did it affect you? Did you get really irritable? I felt sleep? like I would never sleep again. And I, I had that awful feeling of, you know, um, why didn't anyone tell me? You know how everyone <laughs> yes, has that yes. generic, you, you know, you sleep goes out the window. I didn't realise that it meant that every two hours oh, or no. every mm. half an hour you or just every... Don't know. That mm. there's no block of sleep that you ever get no. to repay for all of those yeah. little no. nocturnal... But did you not find while you were pregnant that your body was preparing for sleep deprivation? Because I did, because I wasn't sleeping as well. So by the time the babies were born, or baby, I only had one at a time, not like you. <laughs> <laughs> Get them all out yeah, one. Exactly. I sort of was, I was kind of prepared because I hadn't been sleeping that well because you've got this great big bump yeah. and you're waking oh, yeah, you're up. Can you? you can't get comfortable. So you're almost getting to that sort of mode that you're compensating a little bit that when you have the, your child, yeah. You're, it's not such a shock. I didn't find it such a huge shock at all. To a degree, but I think that the, the killer is that there's no point at which the kids go home back to their real parents, the ones no. that you imagine are out there somewhere knowing what to do with them. You, you don't have that thing where you can just pop them away and then just mm. recoup and get that big block of sleep. And mm. I think, yes, it prepares and you've got, you know, you're going to the loo every three three hours yeah. when you're pregnant, but when the baby arrives, there's just no time that you can actually reclaim for yourself. So but just stock up is, again. We just don't take it, because when mm. I had my first mm. child, my mother, who did it the very traditional way, she had, she had us, she was in hospital for two weeks, mm. where not, sometimes there were two hours yeah, now, you have a baby yeah, and you're right. out. She had two weeks to get into a system, into a routine, to get used to the idea of having a baby, and was looked after, really looked after. So that immediately put her on a good course. And she was saying that to me, it's ridiculous. You can't come out of hospital so quickly. You should relax, sleep when the baby sleeps, and do whatever you've got to I do when the baby's it, awake. You've got to get so more we, into the we same are, pattern as the baby. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So sleep we don't the day need to suffer sleep yeah, deprivation, <laughs> really. But after six weeks of giving birth, I went back to work. So mm -hmm. I was sleep deprivation all night yeah. and working all day. That's and I, really was, hard. I felt it's sick hard. with tiredness. Yes, but it is choice, that's what I'm saying, we don't have to. No, I went back to work far too soon. Yeah. yeah. yeah but do you, did you find your babies adopted a different um, sleeping pattern because you were at work? Because I, I've read that some babies will wake up in the night more if their mothers work because they want their breast milk or whatever or they want to be with them. And that actually, you know, some mothers can get a really good pattern of sleep going, go back to work, and then it reverses, mm -hmm. and the babies sort of wake up during the night, you know, I don't to know. feed. I don't know. That didn't I didn't know. No, yeah. breastfeeding. breastfeeding. Yeah, or, or both. No, well, I breastfed up to six weeks. Mm. Uh, no, I'm lying. Up till twelve weeks, I took them to Spain and I weaned them off because I was working. I was doing record breakers, mm, and I remember yeah. one particular time they were doing um, a tug of war record breaker, and we were in the middle of a field. And I had all the pads in, you know, just in case <laughs> in my bra. And a baby cried. 
and oh, of course, oh, no. <laughs> in the middle of a field. Wasn't even your baby. <laughs> yeah. That happened to me walking around the supermarket, you know, and you hear somebody else's baby cry, and your breasts just start leaking, don't they? Yeah. If you're breastfeeding, it's all. <laughs> That's something they don't tell you about, isn't it? Beforehand, you just don't know. No. I, I had no idea. I, I, I thought when I had a baby, it was all going to be natural mm. and and lovely, and I would know exactly what to do, and I knew nothing. Yeah. And, then, and I also thought that at the end of the day, after caring for my loved one, I'd go to bed, and I'd sleep until morning. And I, I can't believe how naive that was, yeah. that I didn't understand that it was the 24-7, and that it's the, yeah. as you say, you've got to re-gear mm. your sleep cycles, yeah. and, and survive by little droplets along the way, yeah. instead Cat of that big chunk that you want. Exactly. With my oh. first baby, I made a really bad mistake, because my mother had said, oh, don't worry, baby, sleep all day. So I mm. thought the baby had to be asleep all day, and if he was awake, I would panic. <laughs> <laughs> He went to sleep and like most of the time he's asleep and I used to walk to these mother and toddler groups and my baby would be asleep and they'd say oh it'd be so nice to see him awake one day and I'd go no shush he's sleeping and then I was surprised that he woke me up at night yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 screaming in the night there's another thing the more sleep they get during the day the better they sleep during it's the not night true. it's not They're true okay, oh, I'm not so sure my son is the laziest thing and he sleeps too much and don't you find that on holiday that you can just sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep mm -hmm. all day mm -hmm. in the sun and then you get up and think, God, that was exhausting. You <laughs> turn over and then you know, whatever. Yeah. But going back to sleep deprivation, actually, it's not just for us, the sleep deprivation, it's for children as well. Mm. I think we deprive babies of sleep because when we're running around and it's like with working, and so many young mums are going back to work and they don't have a routine at all. It's like up out yeah, the door, yeah. if you've got other children, of course that's immediately going to affect them because yeah. if you've got to get them to school, the baby's asleep, have the six o'clock feed, mm. but you've got to take your children to school at eight o'clock or whatever, hoik out the baby, it's mm. going to be disturbed and woken. It's, I mean, it works both yeah. ways in yeah. actual fact, so everybody's routine goes out the window. Yeah. A lot of them yeah. fall asleep in the car though, don't they? I mean, mm. that's a classic, if you can't get your baby to sleep and they're screaming, oh, you exactly. put them in the car and go for a nice long yeah. drive. And, it and definitely yeah. worked. Yeah. Yeah. With, mine, yeah. well, with, with mine as well, when one woke up and started crying, they would always, she would always wake her sister up mm. and she would start crying and then you'd have two crying oh. babies oh, yeah. and to try and get them back to sleep, the amount of times just walking up and down, singing, Humming, singing little little songs that my mum taught me. At least you can me. sing. Yeah. <laughs> I would have cried even louder <laughs> if I had tried to sing. <laughs> I actually remember driving on this really long road trying to get my little boy to sleep, and I think I was putting myself yeah. to sleep. You know, the eyelids mm. heavy. It's actually quite dangerous, I think, too. You know, if you go for so oh, long yeah, and you're tired without yourself. that. Yeah, and you're so desperate to get the sleep. And I, I remember I would jump in the car after having no sleep all night and, and all day, and just being absolutely beside myself with, you know. <sighs> you know, going out of my head and driving this poor little kid, oh. you know, an unfit mother with one eyelid dangling <laughs> what, what down. What about the theory of, you know, leaving them to cry themselves to sleep? Did any of you do that, like, just, you know, put them down I the did. end of the garden? Mm -hmm. and if I knew, sleep. yes, because um, my first child, he tended to, like, cry. At six o'clock, I can guarantee at six o'clock every evening, there'd be, be this crying session. Now, I don't know if this is true. It's a bit like, it is a bit of a mystery. And it was sort of clearing the lungs. They did that. It was exercising lungs or whatever. I thought, this is really bizarre, it's so routine. And I used to just check, he's not wet, he's not hungry, he's not in pain, so do all the sort of like soothing bit, you're all right, da da da, put him down and let him sort of like cry for mm. 15 minutes. I think the thing is you make a rod for your own back, if you're always there, the minute they cry, yeah. like, oh, pick them yeah. up, whatever. They know, they're so clever, instinctively, they can't tell you this is how they're doing it. Mm. I want to cuddle, I'll cry, she'll pick me up. <laughs> yeah. They'll never stop crazy crying. There's theories on that, aren't there? Because some, some women yeah. say always pick them up and cuddle them. And I, I was a great one for down the bottom of the garden, you can cry for a bit, because you're mm. meant to be asleep, you're a baby. I agree with you, I think um, that's the way to do it. Because they are cute like that, mm. it, it will be that. And then, and then actually then later on when you have other children, that child would be so spoxed. That's my, what my sister had with her first one. Straight away, they were there, two doting parents, you know, and sort of any, immediately, sort of there was something, a cry or fallen over. Both parents would go to her. Mm. I think and they it's, couldn't I cope with the other child. There's all the, these two schools of thoughts now, uh, you know, controlled crying, get them into a routine, or attachment parenting or whatever it's called and you know you, you respond to every every demand so that psychologically they're not damaged but we all know that in reality sometimes it just ain't going to happen yeah. that you can tend to every cry and, and they need their sleep don't they so i think you choose what you want to choose and mm. and uh, that works for the whole family basically mm.